Hey everybody, back with another dividend analysis, and today we're going to be looking at Cardinal Health Inc., or CAH. Uh, we're going to be looking at Cardinal because last week they reported earnings that weren't particularly good, and their stock price tanked, forcing the dividend yield up. So we're going to see if we can take advantage of this, if there's a dividend opportunity here, or if it's something to avoid. Uh, let's start by looking at the yield, which is currently sitting at 3.8%. Um, for a pharmaceutical slash healthcare slash health company, that's pretty good, pretty average for them. They do, a lot of them tend to have higher dividends, your Pfizer's, your uh, AbbVie, stuff like that. Um, compared to the wide market, you're doing about twice as, twice as well. The S&P usually yields right now about 2%, so you're doing about twice that. So the yield's quite nice, actually. Uh, if we go back through the dividend history, we can see that about eight years ago we were getting 30 cents a share and we are currently getting 49 cents a share. Some nice growth there, but it should be noted that over the last four years, the growth has slowed significantly in the dividend. As we can see, we had jumps of four cents, four cents, six cents, two cents. Now we're getting less than really a one, we're getting a half cent increase per year. So the dividend appreciation has definitely been slowing recently. That's something that you should be concerned about if you're, a di if you're looking for dividend appreciation. And when you look at the company as a whole, if they don't think they can raise their dividend by very much after they've done so in the past, that might mean something about the business and where they see it going forward in terms of cash flow and the ability to pay a dividend. So just keep that in mind. Next, let's head over to the metrics. We can see that last year they paid just under 600 million in dividends. We'll see if that's supported once we go to the free cash flow. Uh, over the trailing 12 months, they did just about 1.6 billion in free cash flow. If we divide that by our dividends paid, we can see that their payout ratio of free cash flow was 36%, well within our ideal range of 50%. That means that they could essentially half their cash flow or double their dividend and they would still have a buffer to pay it. Nothing to worry about here. Uh, the only issue is that their cash flow has been very spotty over the recent past. We can see going back even 10 years, we had 1.7 billion which we're below right now however it also dipped to 1.3 dipped it was at 1.59 a couple years ago so it's been very spotty i'd really want to see this kind of normalize even if it's just around this this mark of about one and a half to one and three quarters billion i don't want to see it go up to three billion drop down to one billion go back up to two, drop back down to one. It just, it becomes very hard to gauge where the company can go with the dividend. So we really wanna see that normalize over the short term and into the long term. But currently they do have more than enough free cash on hand to pay off that dividend. Next, let's go take a peek at the income statement. Again, we'll look at the trailing 12 months. We can see that they did 1.15 billion in income over the last 12 months. If we do our calculations there, we can see it is literally just at 50%. So they are paying out half of their income as dividends. That is right at the ideal range for us. We'd like to see it below 50% at best, but just at 50%, I'd call that ideal as well. Uh, again, with their income very spotty, we see going back, we have a $280 million gain. We go down to $4 billion losses, back up to $1 billion in gains. Very spotty income to match the cash flow. Again, we really want to see normalization here. If they can normalize this at right around this point, actually at 50%, if they can get to about one and a quarter billion and just normalize that with just slow, steady growth, over the future that would be that would be perfect for us we'd really like to see that here as dividend investors paying about a, about half of their income as dividends would be just about ideal uh next how are they doing this how are they making this money what do they do uh cardinal health sells medical products they distribute pharmaceuticals and they manufacture manufacture some medical devices so they are essentially a healthcare company they sell drugs they sell devices that are used in medicine so on and so forth uh their last quarter was the issue for the stop stock drop and the dividend increase i won't go over everything but just as a quick review uh their profit was down while their revenue was up this could mean a few things. The inflation definitely plays a role in this, no matter what the experts tell you. When this happens, there is an inflation issue when it's happening with so many companies over 
the wide market. However, for them, when I looked down and went through their actual segments, it seems that one of their big issues was that some of their segments increased in profit while others decreased. It's very likely that the segments that didn't do as well were their higher margin segments, while the segments that did well were their lower margin segments. They were still profitable, making 77 cents a share. The company isn't dying by any means. This wasn't horrible. They just missed what was expected, and they're probably sitting about even value fair value for what they did last quarter of course as an investor you have to look towards the future will this continue will they go back to where they were a few quarters ago was this just a 2020 covid related dip what what's going on you really have to do your homework here you have to make some predictions based on the info you have that's really going to be up to up to you because we can't see the future i'd really be looking at the next two quarters as the big ones i'd like to see increases over where it was if they keep lagging that might prove a big issue and we might drop back down to these years where they're losing money but that's probably unlikely considering how the healthcare industry is booming right now. So just look over the next two quarters, see if that cash flow and that income starts to increase and starts to normalize around those numbers I was telling you. If so, you're you're looking at what is probably fine. If you're already in this as an as an income slash dividend investment, I, I wouldn't be really scared about this one quarter. I'd be looking forward to the next two two to three quarters. That's where I'd really start to analyze what's going on and seeing if I want to get in or add to a position in that I really don't know if adding this to a portfolio right now would be great just because we don't know what the next quarter is going to hold if this was a blip or not but if you do who is this for is this an income play is this a dividend appreciation play does it belong in a dividend portfolio at all from the appreciation side, as we can see, it, this has been slowing in the last few years. Probably not. You're not going to see a lot of appreciation. I would guess they're probably going to keep these half cent increases going for the foreseeable future as they've been going on for three years now. So if you're a dividend appreciation investor, this probably isn't something for you. There are better plays out there. If you're an income investor, this, this is a decent yield for a healthcare stock, just under 4%. Um, if you don't want to be like everyone and have an AbV or a Pfizer this might be something you could do. Uh, I definitely, again, look deeper into it, see what you think the next few quarters, next few years are gonna hold. If you come to a conclusion that this is a good I, a good buy, this was just a blip, this might, be, this might have a place in an income portfolio as a healthcare part of that portfolio. Uh, you might combine this with another healthcare company like a Pfizer or an AbbVie to spread out your risk. You might just use this as, you know, you've got about a 4% yield to balance out some of your higher, more risky plays. Uh, aside from that, uh, there's not much to say. The company is it's really the next few quarters. It's just if this if this was a blip or if it's going to be a continuing trend. If you're interested in this, I definitely mark the earnings dates down for the next couple quarters. If they if those earnings go in line with what you're looking for, then it's probably a good play. If not, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to own this stock. Uh, I hope that helps and thanks for watching.